Hello and welcome. So this scene I'm going to show you how I use groups and how you could use it in your project. You'll notice that I've got multiple damage objects. We've got saws, pendulums, spikes and a spinning ball thing. Now the only thing they share in common is that they're all inside the same group called Hurt Player. And you might be wondering why do we want to do this? So I'll demonstrate now. Now we're back in the editor and we'll see on our swing blade if we go to our node you'll see hurt player go to our ball and chain once again hurt play and you can see the collision collider We've got our spikes in here and every single one obviously has hurt player now you might be thinking i don't want to have to add an object and have hurt player every single time so how i did it was using inheritance and to find my inherited object i just go back to this open in the editor and you'll notice if you are inherited from something you'll have this scene button here if you click on that you'll go to your inherited object now this is a multiple inheritance so I'm going to go up one more level and here we have a hazard object so I know that in my game hazard objects are going to kill the player so on my area 2d which is going to collide with the player we have hurt player now anytime I inherit from hazard that hazard will then hurt the player and I'll give a demonstration now so I'm going to search for hazard I'm going to right click it and then we're going to have a new inherited scene. Now it's called hazard but I'm just going to call this demo object. In the animated sprite I'm going to make a new one. I'll call this flower. So let's just say that the player will die from a flower. Let's use the sunflower. There we go. I'll make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to save it. I'll put in my throwaway stuff because I don't really want to keep this. I'll save it there. Let's go back to the new level. Let's find the object, demo object, let's put it in and let's play the game. So now you'll see when I run into the sunflower and he dies. <clears throat> so let's look at the code that's doing that. Obviously on our demo object, we've got no code in there at all, it's handled inside the player. On my player object I've got an editor area, it's an area 2D with a collision shape, you can see the collision shape around him. Now I've got a signal area enter so I double click the signal it takes me to the player script because I like to keep it all combined we'll check that hey we've been hit we know that an area has just hit us so we want to make sure is this area inside the group so area dot is in group her player so it is so we kill the player and I'm just gonna make sure my game knows that the player is actually dead because it might get a null reference now it gets a little bit more complicated because I have multiple different deaths how you could do that you could tag the deaths too so I said tag there so if you're from a unity background groups means tags so the purpose of me making this tutorial is because I see code like this regularly if you go down this would work however every object needs to have a unique name so this would only work for the very first spike the other spikes would be one two three etc so it would stop working so another way around this I've seen people use is begins with spike so that means any object that begins with spike well that that would kill you too however you'll notice that it's like a lot more work and if you want to have multiple objects you don't want to say begins with spike begins with saw begins with etc etc it's just easy to have a group and that's the whole point of having groups is to make your code more concise and compact and easily more readable too so this first example checks that something's happened what group is that in there's another method we could do to find objects which I personally like to do with this code using groups. So if I go to my player, go to the node and groups and sure enough it's called player. Now there's only one object in my whole game called player so I know that if I'm looping through every single object in that group it's only there could only ever be one and if there isn't I'm going to return null and my game handles it later down in the line. The great thing about this is that I can check if some objects exist without having to go through every single node in the tree which you, you could have thousands of nodes it wouldn't be very optimized. Using groups it's much quicker once again it's compact it's concise it's readable. So let's see where I've called this in my game. So I've done a search for return player and I'm going to go to my wolf creature. So what happens here is when the wolf loads I check that the player equals to game return player so it runs that script if it will return a player if it exists then in the state of the wolf such as handle idle handle move etc I check hey is the player existing now we know it will exist if it is in the tree if it doesn't then we don't want to do this code so you can see how easy it is to do it this way 
without having to do a lot more checks. You also saw with the hurt player example that it's really easy to add objects that can hurt the player later on. I find groups as important as using auto loads and signals and I hope this helps clarify groups a bit more. So if you made it this far, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.